welcome back everyone to a long overdue update on the E36 M3 Touring project. As you can see, cars back up on the lift and some progress is hopefully going to be made. So last night I spent time stripping um, stuff off the underside, um, little bits and pieces I hadn't taken off before, things like brake lines, fuel lines, little bits and clips and stuff like that. Um, getting ready to basically do what I plan, which is to strip a lot of the underseal off, repair and remove any little bits of surface rust, things where seams are breaking out, stuff like that, little brackets of caught uh, moisture over time and dirt, and then um, use a rust converter, kind of epoxy, um, to seal all that back up, and then finally put on new um, kind of rubberized under seal, and then have it all sealed up for a later date when I would like to get it all kind of painted to match the underside of the rest of the car. This has been a long time coming because I mentioned the last time when we had the subframe mounts reinforcements put in, um, I kind of bottled it a bit because I don't think I was ready to do it. I was, I put a bit of fear into myself and then over these months, I kind of got a bit of like analysis paralysis where there's just too much data, there's too many things to research, too many different products, too many different people saying different ways of doing things that I put a bit of fear into myself that I was going to mess it up and I'm not a professional. I don't do this kind of thing. This is my first time really giving this a go. Um, but it's got to that point where I do need to just crack on. Ironically, last time I was working on the car in the workshop, um, and even when we had Mr. Vanos down doing the Vanos stuff, it was boiling in the workshop. It's, it's a big workshop, a lot of glass above us. It gets hot in here, um, probably about 30 degrees. Then I decided to do the underseal stuff. It was too cold. The product wouldn't have gone off. So I've had to wait for it to warm up a bit just to be able to actually do this process. Anyway, I'm probably now doing this intro just to put off doing the job, but I need to get on with it. During my stripping process, I did find a lot of it was better than I thought it was. So I've already think I'm going to scale it back a bit and not remove stuff that is good because I don't think I'm going to be able to do a better job than BMW have done. And this is stuff like this has lasted for the 23, 24 years, however old this car actually is. 25, 25 years old. Um, so I don't think I want to take it as back as far as I thought it was, but I do want to get a lot back to bare metal, um, get rid of any surface rust and give it this car the best chance of surviving over time. So I do want to use this car and I don't want to be worried about taking it out in wet and rain and that kind of thing. So enough of this babbling intro, let's get on with it and see where we get to. Okay, so before I get really stuck in and do the messy work, I thought I'd give you a quick look at what we're working with. So I've spent the day so far just cleaning, really. Kind of the similar as what I did um, underneath, all on there. Just cleaning out all the dirt, you know, many, many years, so I can get a good idea of what I'm actually working with. And then that lets me be a bit more selective, I think, in what I take off and repair. Because kind of, you know, you look at it there, you think, well, that's pretty good. Well, does there reason need to be anything done? But, you know, you get a bit closer and you start to see that just, it's just starting to break through in places. Actually, let's not bring that down a bit. There we go. Yeah, it's just, it could be left. I don't know how much worse it would get but I don't want to leave it, if that makes sense. I want to, it's a good show. I want to do as much as we can. And then this is the main stuff that I've got to do, which is where it was stripped off for the reinforcements, which you can see there. Part of the reason I decided not to strip it out quite so much was that all this looks really good. All the rear panel looks really nice. I've had a little bit of a clean here and that, like, I'm never gonna get it better than this. There's no way I can do a better job than BMW factory has. Same again here. All pretty good. Not too much to worry about. It looks like kind of something that's got caught in the wheel arches at some point. They've both got it on this side. And then these are some little test patches I did to kind of figure out the tools. And then another little test patch here. And 
do a little tester here of just taking back a broken edge, um, kind of similar to say that. And I think that might be all I need to do on little bits like that. There are gonna be bigger areas, I'm gonna take it all off, but for areas kind of this far out, I might be able to just do that. The last thing I did notice was um, sort of up here, but that's all body shop stuff. That's not me, That's that needs to be probably properly cut out, repaired as part of the paint process. So, that's my sort of mind, mindset, I don't know, process. What I'm kind of thinking at the moment is kind of everything you can roughly see now will be stripped back and to bare metal, especially like places that already have been. But anywhere that's good, good green, you know, good under seal. It just doesn't seem quite like the right thing to do. You know, up the top of the strut towers, that's good. Got a little split there and one just by that grommet. Just little bits and pieces really, there's nothing major. But anyway, like I said, this is the bit that kind of put the fear into me. So I'm gonna stop talking to this or talking to all of you and kind of set up a time lapse and basically put some ear defenders on, some eye goggles and just get on with it and see how much I can strip off. All right. I guess there's nothing left to do but do it. Okay, this is quite slow progress, which I did expect. This tool does seem pretty good. It's nice to use. This is an advert for Milwaukee. Um, but it keeps hitting what I think is thermal cutout. It's probably asking a bit much of this small thing, which is just meaning I can't really keep getting stuck in, especially on thick stuff like this. So yeah, it just slows it down too much and I think that's building too much heat in the motor and I think it's turning it off. So that's slowing progress a bit. But overall, it's not going too bad. Finding like little bits of rust that I wasn't expecting, uh, which I guess is kind of the reason why you do it. All right. Okay, it's time for an update. If I sound tired, it's because I incredibly am. It's the end of Sunday, which some of you will know means that this car needs to be back outside in about 12 hours. 
but this has been by far the worst thing I have done. Maybe not ever, but <laughs> car wise, easily the worst thing I've ever done. It's, it's just been so gruelling. Honestly, like the like physical exertion, the, like the horrible being under a car, the stretching, the odd positions you're standing in and stuff. It's just been really bad. Um, so originally I planned to strip the whole thing back. I scaled that back. And realistically, I should have scaled that back even further because whilst there was little bits of rust kind of hiding in places, um, say up there, you see that darker bit in the center of the screen, that was rust. Um, overall, I've spent most of my time just stripping off good under seal and whatever BMW used was incredible. One, it lasted 25 years, and two, it was not simple to remove at all, to the point where, truthfully, I haven't got all of it. There is little bits and pieces here and there, you know, in that corner. I just can't get to it, just, but I just don't have the tools. So, and see up in the pockets, clean them out as best I could. I'm hoping the dinner trial is gonna catch the rest. Um, pretty much what I need to do now, you'll notice an orange glow, I've got a heater on the car trying to warm the metal up. What I need to do now is get a coat of RC900 on, so in 12 hours time hopefully that will be dry enough to put the subframe back up and weed it back outside. Because unfortunately I can't just leave it here. Um, so now it's time to get on and do that, I guess. <laughs> oh, I knew there was a reason I put this off for so long. Okay, a couple weeks have passed since the last shots. And what I realized was two days was way too ambitious to try and get all of this done. So it's now Easter weekend, which is a bank holiday. That gives us four days to try and get as much done as I can. And I've also scaled back the project. So let's have a little look at what happened last time. So, from last time, this is all now covered in RC900. Um, I have to say, I was a little worried. I, every now and then I stuck a camera under just to kind of have a look at how it was doing outside. And I'm more pleased with it than I kind of felt like I was. I left feeling a bit defeated. You can kind of see bits here where it's kind of like a bit patchy, where I might just scuff that back and give it another coat. I'm going to give the whole thing another coat when I coat the entire car. Um, but overall, I think it's actually come out okay. You can see these bits have gone completely black and that means that the reaction is complete. Got some bits that kind of gone maybe a little bit brown. Maybe they've got some little bits of rust coming through. It's hard to tell really, but I'll probably scuff those back. So what I'm doing this time is I've been around with a paint pen and I've just circled all the areas that I wanna attack, just so midway through I'm not forgetting where I'm at and missing any places. And I'm just trying to do as much as I can without going crazy and stripping off the entire thing like I was there. And then I've marked out kind of, we'll see how we're going, if I can come down and just repair the bits of under seal on this, because generally it's pretty good, but I just wanna keep it as best I can. So it's gonna look roughly more like you can't really see that, but a little bit came through there. I took it back and I painted it, and now that's ready, I think, for some under seal. So I think there's nothing to it but to do it, so let's just crack on.
you join me now, it's day three, Easter Sunday. I spent the last two days just getting at this kind of thing. Just, I don't know how interesting the time lapses are gonna be because it's such a small difference realistically, but let's take a look and see what I've done. So first things we're gonna notice is I've stripped back all kind of these areas, just been hunting for rust, finding little small pockets of it here and there and just going from there kind of thing. Did round all these um, supports that Gabe welded in for me previously. Uh, went along here. All these little edges just finding where rust was starting to break through basically. Up in this pocket here. That was a bit annoying to clean out. Haven't done quite the best job. So I can't get some tools in there but I'm hoping the RC900 is going to take care of that. Up here, clean the, the mouth of this tube. Gave around the spring seats, around the spring seats at the top, especially they were just coming through a rust. And then these two front subframe mounts as well. The, you can see in front of those, the two, I think they're seat belt anchors. Um, they were quite heavily corroded. And then as well, I decided to strip off what I did previously. I've got a bit more time, a bit more experience, and crucially it's warmer. So I'm thinking I can maybe do a better job. So that's the culmination of quite a few days of work there. All that bare metal. So now there's nothing really left to do other than try and get some paint on here. Um, some Dinatro RC900, hopefully that's gonna go on nicely, convert any remaining rust and seal this up. So let's get to that. That's the Dinatrol RC900 all applied and cured overnight. I did come back to a second coat in the evening and now this is kind of it. Roughly, not quite 24 hours after the first coat, but kind of getting there. It's baked in the nice um, kind of greenhousey workshop we have with all the skylights. So it's about 24 degrees at the moment. So it's gone pretty well. It's, it's nicely cured off and all the purpley bits, um, where it's reacted with any um, remaining kind of rust in the metal similar to if you used a wheel cleaner that goes all purple it's a similar kind of concept i guess um, i'm going to leave this video here because it's probably one getting a bit long and two not the most interesting i'll admit um, the next step would be i might do some form of epoxy primer and then seam sealer and under seal and then that will kind of almost be ready to then start building up i would like to um, dust the underside with um, British Racing Green just to make it all match a bit because I think from memory the underside is black so it'll look a bit patchy otherwise. Um, but thanks to everyone who stuck along with this, kept watching and to everyone who's come up to me um, kind of at meets, events, that kind of thing, um, asked me how the progress is going. You know if you said you've enjoyed it that's always nice to know that other people are enjoying what I'm doing and or just contact me on social media that kind of thing. Apologies, it's been... This is a bonus bit of video because it's Jubilee weekend and I wasn't really planning on filming too much just so I could crack on, but I thought I'd take a quick look. This is what we did last time. The RC900 seems to have done its job. It's about a month outside, I think. No rust that I can see. It's all nicely sealed up. So that's all good. Um, decided to... The next bit is kind of all these circled sections, just little localized repairs. Thought I'd play every 36 owner's favorite game, which is side skirt roulette. And all things considered, this is the better side. That's not too bad. That's all gonna get cut out. Um, 
but I can leave all this to body shop stuff. Um, a little bit there. And uh, this is kind of the worst bit, I guess, but this has had a different wing put on it, pattern part. So I've got a replacement for that. And the body shop can handle all that when they do all the whole paint thing. Um, bring it round here, sort of similar. You can see the jack and point just starting to burst out, but it feels, feels fairly solid. So I think that's okay. Um, this is an original wing. Uh, it's just starting to go soft there. So maybe the bottom of the wing needs repairing. And then the worst bit is over here. You can see that's all in fairness to it. There's like some holes going through it, but even that, still feels pretty strong but that means that essentially coming through there see it's just flicking off it's where water's got underneath that possibly broken through that hole there and just started but that is strong so but essentially this whole panel up to like this line it does go in but usually you just cut it there but I'll let the body shop kind of decide what they want to do. That whole panel can be replaced. And it comes in along here. So I can pretty much ignore all that and just get on to treating all these. Um, just little bits where it's just starting to break through and I want to protect. And then the bigger task of finally getting all of this. I've got some epoxy primer I'm going to chuck on and then finally get it into underseal finally so that's a little quick overview it's not been that quick now this is three minutes long um i'm gonna just set up time lapse and crack on with it really So this is it, the fruits of my labour, 
one of the worst things I've ever done and something I hope I never have to do again. It's almost there, it's not fully there, but it's so nice to finally see it all in kind of one colour under seal. It just really feels like it's paying off a bit now. I'm really, really pleased actually. I don't know if it's going to last the test of time. I'm incredibly pleased with what I've managed to achieve considering I didn't really know what I was doing. So I thought I'd just do a little walk around of it as it is now because again it probably won't look like this much longer. Um, masked out all the areas I thought needed to be masked. Things like that. I'm not 100% sure if I should have masked these faces but yeah I wasn't super worried about trying to get an kind of an original finish as if it hadn't been touched much more important for it to be actually sealed and protecting the metal underneath but I don't think I did too bad of a job it's kind of obvious it's been done like I said but that wasn't my focus So yeah, I'm also gonna, um, I was doing some time lapses of doing the bits forward on here. These are all in RC900 now, as you can tell with like the purple. Um, this one, this body plug was quite bad. I put some pictures in, so I had to pull that out and, um, Kind of treat it. What I'm gonna do now and not gonna film is uh, scotch these back up and primer them so they're just ready to go but I'm just so happy that I'm starting to see maybe some form of light at the end of the tunnel on this and seeing it all in black is really pleasing but I can't wait to see it all in green when it's all done. Thank you so much for watching guys. If you liked the video, please remember to smash that like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. If you want to join the conversation, please drop a comment below and we'll try our best to respond to you. If you want to watch more of this project, you can do so over here. If you want to watch what YouTube thinks you might like from our other content, you can do so over here.